Our coffers were depleted at the Battle of Stirling. So we need to strengthen our economy once again before pushing south into lands held by the English. We need to construct a market and establish trade routes to the villages of friendly clans. Local legends speak of three sacred relics hidden south of Stirling. Acquiring these artifacts for Wallace's army will be a great boost to Scottish morale. The Scottish army has been rallied by recent victories against the English. The situation is starting to look up. It will help the morale of our army to collect holy relics and place them in our monastery. One of the relics is close to your town. An ally has another relic, and the English have captured a third. You can retrieve a relic by... ...clicking a monk and right-clicking the relic. Monks have other abilities as well. They can heal your injured soldiers or those of your allies. They can also attempt to convert enemy soldiers to join your army. Good. You have a relic. Protect the relic in the monastery by right-clicking the monastery. Perfect. You now have one relic garrisoned. Relics garrisoned in your monastery will slowly add gold to your stockpile. Farms are a good source of food once you have exhausted forage bushes and animals. Farms are built like buildings and must be periodically rebuilt. To gather food from a farm, click a villager, then right click a farm. It's nice to have allies on the map. Your ally the yellow player, can help you fight the enemy. You can also trade with your allies. To trade, you will need to build a market. You have reached your ally's town. Go inside to see how his city is doing. Your ally's gate will open automatically for you. Welcome! If you've come for the relic, you can find it on the hill to the northeast of our town.
Oh boy, yeah. Did you know that there are three different modes for the minimap in the lower right corner of the screen? You can show only military units, or only resources, and trade units by clicking the buttons just below and to the right of the minimap. You now have two relics garrisoned. Bring back one more and you will be victorious. Villagers and soldiers normally appear outside of the building that created them. You can have your units move to a spot once they are created by using gather points. To set a gather point for infantry, click your barracks, click set gather point, then click where on the map you want your infantry to gather. You can use the technology tree to see what technologies and upgrades you can research. Click the technology tree button in the upper right corner of the screen to see the tree for your civilization. You have a market. The market can create trade cards to generate extra gold. You can also exchange one resource for another at the market for a small fee. Click the market, then click sell food for gold. The English are attacking our town. Can you tribute any spare food or gold to us? To tribute your ally, click the Diplomacy button in the upper right corner of the screen. Give your ally food and gold, but don't give him everything you own. Thanks for the resources. If you have any spare soldiers, come to our town and let's drive the English out. Paul Red.
kid, tall. Vargere, kid fear, kid tall. Kid. Rob Wigger. enough soldiers now to think about attacking the English and recovering their relics. If you're getting ready to attack the English, I can help you out. Here! Take this food and wood. Congratulations. 
You have captured all three relics. With the three relics locked away safely in Scottish churches, men murmur that we are blessed by the heavens. Our army now stands a chance as we prepare for the final clash with the English. Scotland now has archers and knights of her own with which to move objects. We march south to Falkirk, where we will join with the army of William Wallace and plan our combined attack upon the English castle. The only way that we can hold the body lowlands around Falkirk is to build a castle and as many walls as we can construct in a short time. These fortifications will serve to protect our camp as we construct siege weapons with which to assault the English castle. Once the castle is constructed, Wallace himself is sworn to join our forces. Together, we will attack Longshanks and his English troops. The English could attack at any time. You have some walls already, but you should complete them as soon as you have enough stone. build towers to defend your city. Units can garrison within a tower for defense and protection, and archers can even fire out of a tower. If you have surplus resources of one type, you can sell them for gold at your market. You can then use the gold to buy what you need. To build a castle, you must first advance to the next age, the Castle Age. The advanced buttons let you set combat states for your soldiers. A defensive soldier will be less likely to attack an enemy that comes near him. Click a military unit, then note the combat stance buttons in the lower left corner of the screen. Using the advanced buttons, 
You can also command a soldier to patrol an area between two points and guard or follow another unit. Kid? Robwigia. Airlove. Robwigia. Airlove. Bit tall. Bit fear. Kid? Tall. Airlove. Tall. The advanced buttons allow access to a new type of formation. For example, with a box formation, you can protect a weak unit, such as a monk. Tall. Bit fear. Tall. Tall. Congratulations! You're going to find lots of things to do in the Castle Age. For starters, try building a siege workshop to make battering rams and other siege weapons. With your new siege workshop, you can make battering rams. Rams are slow, but they are resistant to arrow fire and excellent at knocking down walls. You may need some rams to attack the English castle. You may need to assign extra villagers to gather stone, so you'll have enough to build the castle and all the fortifications you need. Completed the castle. Sir William should be here soon, and then it will be time to attack the English. Wallace has come. Bid fear. One of 
your most powerful units is created at the castle. Create 10 more Wood Raiders. With William Wallace and his Wood Raiders on your side, the English may be in trouble. Once you have a large army with plenty of siege weapons, go destroy the English castle.
The English castle at Falkirk is no more. The English pretensions in Scotland are surely at an end. The forces of Wallace are triumphant. It looks certain that we would be defeated at Falkirk. Yet somehow, though outnumbered and outranged by English longbows, we were victorious. The English castle was torn down. And a Scottish one should be built in its place. William Wallace has shown us the path to victory. Although he is but one man, he inspires great deeds in others. Many of the Scottish knights and lords have drawn their swords with his. Wallace's own sword is a five and a half foot beast, forced of course in Scotland. He has sworn not to rest until his sword finds the neck of Edward Longshanks. The struggle will continue, but we have learned the ways of war. Now, it is the English who will fear.